And we are live. SB Talk Sports Sean Will Real takes over fake debates. It is Friday. Sean, how are you feeling on this Friday, man? Feeling good, man. Last night of the play in, ready for the playoffs to start this weekend. Big fight this weekend. Yeah, man. How you doing? Oh. I'm doing good, and I might not be doing too good because I did forget to grab my laptop, which I'm going to grab because it's right behind me so I can turn this game on. He said the boys are really trash. This is crazy. But we got a lot of action-packed show going on today. Uh, we got the Kyrie Irving talking about him not making it to uh, Team USA, never been on. We got um, we got a lot of things going on with the Patriots, which is crazy, which is crazy news. Obviously, my Bulls are going to get your heat right now, and it don't look like it's going in my favor for him to check the score. I hope we actually get it together. But with everything going on, because it was going to be my team versus your team to make it to the playoffs to play Boston, and we got to talk about the Patriots. So I had to bring a special guest on, the the, the fellow Patriot. He he has his shamrock shake with him right now. We got to go. True to King hey. TV's interview. True to King <laughs> is in the building. Hey, what up, everybody, man? Hey, we salute, salute to y'all, man. Hey, is it, I'm the first ever two town guest. Uh, yes, I, I, yes, yes. Hey, that's it. Hey, man, I'm making yeah, it. I, history, man. It's gonna be. <laughs> now I had I had to get you back on true because the first day we double booked. I had to get you an episode by yourself. So, welcome to the show again. Officially, this is the the True to King episode only. This is official, right? Hey, pre- appreciate that. Appreciate that. But uh, man, before we get into the show, I guess I ask you quick: How nervous are you going to feel when these Chicago Bulls come back and beat this Miami Heat? You got to see us in the first round. And we're gonna upset y'all like the we believe warriors. Are you ready for that? That's that's crazy. Well, first of all, y'all gotta take care of business being down 10. Right there, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot, 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 lot of time left though. But I mean, hey, I mean, I mean, it, it happens. I mean, injuries, listen, man, it's just it's, it's unfortunate, but it's part of the game. Like both sides, like Jimmy Butler with the MCL. Like, that's probably like how we not winning. Jimmy Butler is not playing. But like hey, listen, he like I said, listen, even and he gonna play. Like the heat gonna continue yeah. to play, they're gonna continue. You got the air coach is still there. So yeah. I mean, hey, um and like I said, they got home court, you know what I mean? They got home court, so too. Um the bull, like I said, bulls. I don't so, know. So realistically speaking, who would you rather who would you rather play in the first round? The my Chicago Bulls or Sean Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler probably will come back yeah. if they play. No, no, he's out. He's out. He's out for several weeks. Oh, it, oh, it's so over with. Oh, it's over. Yo, yeah, so weeks. I mean, adding that context to it is like, well, it's like at that point, Jimmy Butler like kind of like the heart. He like the heart and soul, like mm-hmm. the engine per se, is when it comes to the player aspect. But I rather if I if rather go against Chicago because like I mean Billy Dobbin. I mean I think I think Joe Mazzulla is. Is better right now than Joe Bill Dobbins as a coach. I know he what Bill Dobbins has done in his career, but if, if it's in 2024, coaching wise, and it's like this is, I mean, like I said, think one thing too, Miami, when you Miami Celtics play so much, it, it's always hard. When you play somebody so many times frequently like For that, sure. it's always gonna be hard and child, no matter who's on the court, you know what I mean? They yeah. still have guys that so I'd rather go against if so does Chicago be I think the easier tags. And I have to be honest with myself. Yeah, that, that, that's probably the case. So, obviously, a lot of things have uh, has come into fruition as we go into halftime, too, for this Bull versus Heat game, where everybody feels they should be at a certain place or a spot. And I'm thinking Kyrie Irving might be this generation's Isaiah Thomas because he never played for Team USA, and he had a lot to say about him not being put on the team. First, and then it's also said Jalen Brunson got snubbed, Kyrie Irving got snubbed. And you look at the roster, it is a very stacked roster, guys. Honest, realistically speaking, do you feel like anybody got snubbed? Uh, true, you go first, then Sean, you go next to true to guess. Do you um, feel like anybody got snubbed off Team USA that you prefer to be on the roster after looking at the roster as a whole? I, I absolutely nobody got snubbed. When you got a team this time like this, it's only so many people you can put on the team. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very, I think it's low key. This disrespectful saying somebody got snub when these guys are talented too, or just as good, or maybe better. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing too, I'll be telling people, it's not, it's not an all star game. It's not a pickup game. It's all about fit and team wise. And yes, mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving, Jalen Brunson is better than, in my opinion, than uh, Tyler Halliburton. But 
scale. Taj Halliburton gets the team better. Taj Halliburton, one of the best passers in the world, facilitators in the world. So you add, the, I mean, no straight to Kyrie Jalen Brunson, they're, they're go to scores. You already mm -hmm. they got a lot of those already. I mean, that's true. Me, so it's like, nah, that's true. And yeah. if you notice, too, if you notice, the smaller dude on the team is only 6'3 and Steph Curry. Yes, you know, that, is, that is true, that is true, I see, too. I see. So they have some, you know what I mean? So it's all about fit and what that mm. plays out about their team. So. Mm. What about you, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I, so last year when we when the USA was in FIFA, and, you know, we most of us watched the games because, you know, we we junkies because that's just what it is. Unfortunately. But, yeah, I know. Um, the, the, the three guys I thought were automatic locks for this Olympic team were Tyrese Halliburton and Anthony Edwards. And I thought Mikael Bridges was going to make the team. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think Kawhi would be on this team um, just because, again, Kawhi's injury. We, we ain't got to go into that. We right. understand what it is. Um, so I felt like because of what Tyrese Halliburton and what Anthony Edwards did last year in FIFA, mm -hmm. that they pretty much locked themselves in to have two of the Olympic spots. Yes. But as True said, it's a stacked roster um, in terms of talent, but fit does matter. Um, mm -hmm. personalities do matter. Um, th th that's a big part of it as well. And, and sometimes it's just timing, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's timing. And, you know, and I think, you know, to be honest with you, you know, they didn't put this team together overnight. Mm -hmm. Um, they've been working on putting this roster together since the end of FIFA. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, Grand Hill and, and that the Olymp U S Olympic committee, you know, mm -hmm. this is where they decided they wanted to go with, um, I still think it's a good chance two of these guys don't play in the Olympics because um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think Joel Embiid plays and and I you know Kawhi is already dealing with inflammation in his knee mm -hmm. going into the playoffs I just don't see those two guys playing so two spots mm -hmm. open up you know possibly Mikael gets one of those spots you know and somebody else may get the other spot so got to be a B though no, I don't know what yeah I would think yeah yeah I mean I would think Chet would be in the conversation definitely mm. um as a stretch guy but also Maybe, you know yeah. we know he's we know he's a a solid rim protector and a good help defender so um and 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 you know as as we talked about last night mm. on true to king tv this Just all like comes down TV. to steve kerr and how do he he decides he's going to deploy this roster oh, he ain't playing no big man he <laughs> you know that he ain't playing a big man you yeah. over 6 11 you might not play <laughs> yeah, listen, man. Hey, he paid. He gonna put Jason Taylor about the five. He does that though. He, he does with me, man. We got, hey, he going do it. Listen, I'm telling y'all. Listen, it, it's gonna be like clockwork, man. It's going like it's <laughs> bro. That man say, wait, you, you your, your specialty is rebounding. Nah, we don't need you, buddy. This you man, man Tatum going to go bird. This man Tatum go bird bound for rebounds, man. That's ridiculous, and that's what and I would want if we do get another guy. Um, for the team, I would definitely want to. Uh, it got to be a rebounder. Now I have to go in the archives and have to see what guy. Yeah, I, I want a dirty work guy. Who's gonna play that Dwight Howard role? Who's gonna play that Tyson Chandler role? I need one of those guys for that. For that wing, I think Mikael Bridges is the next guy. But when Kyrie Irving went into depth, though, too, he would just say, "I just didn't fit well with the team unit because obviously chemistry does matter." But he also said he missed the fact of people actually trying out for the team. Right, and I guess he felt like they would just handpick instead of him. Like everybody go out there and play. Like, of course, we know Carrie everyone go out there and put in buckets and work. But like y'all was saying, that it is about team fit and what team need because we all one of the best perimeter defenders we've seen in the league in a long time. He's gonna be there to be a defensive guy. Tyrese Halliburton gonna play the PG role, be a passer. Like the only guys who probably gonna be like, and I don't even think LeBron really gonna go too much out of character for his role because I think LeBron is just probably gonna be there to close the door at the end of the game. But like LeBron, Steph, and probably KD is the only one that probably get like anything else extra. Everybody else on the team gonna have a certain role that they do. Even Devin Booker is a great scorer. They might use him as Clay Thompson as run out, run out the screens, run out down screens, catch and shoot, put him in a good spot to get the shot open. Anthony Edwards could be just one of the guys getting off the backdoor cuts or getting them in certain spots for him to attack the rim to open up spots for the other guys. Also be one of uh, one of the defensive. He might take a defensive role because he's 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 athletic to, to, to guard other players. So and Joel Embiid, I think his main deal is going to be rebounding and giving him a post presence when the shots are not floating. 
So I think Kyrie Irving also has to understand that point. I get why you say he might not fit well, but also it's the things that he got to understand that, like, if you come to Team USA, no matter how big of a star you is, it's a role you're going to have to accept. And it might be out of what you used to. Everybody had to do that at some point in time at Team USA. Everybody had a role. They had to fit. But, True, what you think about Kyrie Irving feeling like it should have been tryouts for the team and him saying that he just didn't fit this roster? That's a fair. That's a fair assessment. I mean, like I said, you we all know like USA was known for the tryouts. Like you know, yeah. It, 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 I remember like stories like a bunch of people like would try and go go out their way to make the USA team. But like I mean, and also, but at the same time, like we all know, like to certain people on this roster, like they didn't even need to try. Let's be Steph Curry, and LeBron didn't need to try out. Like KD, no. they those are the type of people don't need to try out, but. I do understand what Kyrie's saying that the people that's maybe the end of bench guys have maybe have some trials or whatever. I don't know. He, he um, having the opportunity per se. I mean, but I mean, hey, listen, like I said, Drew Hot, listen, Drew Hot, we all know what Drew Hot is there. He's gonna play to, to play the defense. Um, and he's gonna spot and he, and he can spot up. He's showing he can um, it's like he, he don't need to necessarily the ball in his hands like Ky, like Kyrie. Listen, it, like he's a great scorer, um, but they don't need a lot of scoring. You, you have, I mean, so so it's like you going with Kyrie going. You ask Kyrie to be a lockdown defender, or what do no. you? I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. That's gonna end up terrible. What about you, Sean? I mean, you know, it's I, I understand the whole thing around the tryouts and blah blah blah. I get it. You know, it's just you know, but also sometimes your tryout is what you've done in previous Olympic and international mm -hmm. competitions, right? And all of these guys. Uh, mm -hmm. With the exception, I think of Kawhi, have all played in, in international ball, um, mm -hmm. you know, either FIFA or in the Olympics. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I think that was just uh, uh, enough. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, maybe in B, I don't, maybe in B hasn't played. Um, he hasn't, I don't think B. Yeah. No, um, he just got his citizenship not too long ago. He, he played right for the team USA. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, so I mean, you, you know, so I, I understand Kyrie's point. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, the one of the reasons why they people have to remember one of the reasons why they reinstituted the tryouts and basically the training camps was because of how bad 2004 was mm -hmm. and how bad it ended. It um, bad. and so yeah, it was bad. And Jerry Colangelo, who was running the, the USA basketball at the time, was like, This ain't working, just let's put the team together. We got to get guys that's committed to basically every summer, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, so yeah, I understand Kyrie's point, but again, I think you know. Uh, we're, we're past that point of you know the the, the three summers and the training camps and the tryouts. I uh -huh. think you know you got enough guys committing, you know that you know can play, you know at the international level and be successful. Agreed. Now, obviously, talk to you, USA. So obviously, Kawhi Leonard has the last spot, and let's have a real let's have let's have a real real conversation. Give me a percentage. Of Kawhi Leonard actually playing and being healthy enough to play, and if you think he's going to be healthy and go for it, then cool. But if you don't, who should replace him or take his spot if he's out? True, you um, first, there, Sean. I was shocked that he, I was shocked that he said he wanted to play though. I mean, he accepted. I'm gonna right. say ten. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give like a 10, 15 percent because the fact that he even committed. It was even surprising itself. The fact that he committed, and we've been hearing rumors since last year, so mm -hmm. he could have been on the team or tried to be on the team years ago. So the fact that he wants to be on the team, um, depend on like that's with all that being said too, is all depend mm -hmm. on his injury and his knee. Yeah. But if if he is out, um, the perfect place. I mean, Mikael Bridges, like I said, a guy that is going to know his role. Like mm -hmm. I said, we. It's, the team is got a lot of scoring. He can score as well too, but like yeah. they don't need that much scoring. He's gonna play the lockdown defensive role, so that'd be the perfect replacement, in my opinion. What about you, Sean? Do you think Kawhi Leonard is gonna be healthy enough to suit up? If not, who you got replacing him? What number does Kawhi wear? Eight. No, I'm saying in in, in uh, the NBA. Um, what number do why why is number two. blanking two. two? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, two. Yeah, I give it a two percent chance that he played. <laughs> hey, yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely because he's not even healthy for the playoffs. I said it'd be right. crazy. He don't play yeah. for the playoffs, then suit up for Team USA. Like, yeah, I'm healthy now. Yeah, wow, yeah. 
But who yeah. you got replacing him though? Yeah, Mikael Bridges. Yeah, I think Mikael Bridges makes the most sense. Again, he mm. can replicate, you know, some of what Ka- what Kawhi can bring defensively. And again, he's probably not a guy that's going to be, you know, complaining if he doesn't play big minutes or any of that other stuff. So yeah, so that true going too hard for his Celtics. I, I could say Jalen Brown. I could say Jalen Brown, but I mean, nah, nah. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to go Mikael Bridges. I think it's a low percentage chance. I'm I'm gonna have to, have to look into like what American bigs that we got that can. I I just need the guy who could be Tyson Chandler. That's what you need: a rebounder, paint protector, dunker. That's all they need. Because then, because if they do get Mikael Bridges, I'm not gonna lie to Drew. How they Mikael Bridges together on the court is defensive, the def, defensive greatness. That would that'd be nice. Last question, then we're going on to the next one. Who do you guys believe will be the closer five with this team? When you was game time on the line, who y'all got as a closer five? True. The closer five, I think it'll be Curry, Taylor, LeBron, KD, and um, if healthy, Joel Embiid. As well. Okay. Or Anthony okay. Davis. Or Anthony Davis. D. Davis. I like that. What about you, Sean? Who's closing the door? I'm going to say it'll be Steph, um, LeBron, Katie, Tatum, and I actually think it'll be Drew Holiday. I don't think they'll play with a traditional big closer. <laughs> Steve Kirk. Be, Steve I'm, Kirk. I'm good for <laughs> you know. Yeah, what, what position you play? Center? Uh, nah, sit down. Sit down. Not the traditional center. For me, I got to go Steph. KD, Braun, Tatum, and AD. I think that's going to be the line of that closing, though. And, and then, if anything, if Kawhi's looking how he's supposed to, take Tatum out and they're going to put Kawhi in. Kawhi will be the closer. It just depends on Kawhi, though. Because Kawhi can knock down a shot late in game and he'll guard the best player. But let's see if he be healthy or not. Um, obviously, we know sports betting is uh, the thing now. It's very popular. It's, you see it on every commercials in the sport league. I might have to go get a bet sponsor too, Sean. Might as well use code RTOD to get a percentage off on your bet, or get a boost or something. You might have to go ahead and look into betting. Um, betting is not good for you if you're playing the sport. So NBA, which is another story came out about his other brother too, uh, Michael Porter. This is the brother of Michael Porter, Jonte Porter. He is banned for life for betting. And now – which is a bad, sad prayers up to the Porter family. Their other younger brother, who was an up and coming basketball player, just got six years in prison for a DUI crash. So it's prayers to the Porter family. Hope they get everything in order. There's a lot of things going bad. But back to Jonte Porter. So he, long story short, he gave other people plays to bet. They made money. One dude almost made a million dollars doing the under. But from what you realize, from what he did alone, so we're just going to look at what he did. Forget everybody else. He won a max of $20,000. Match, this is a guy on a million-dollar contract. He lost his NBA career for $20,000, which is probably like a month check, a month or two check for him. I, I think this was dumb. It wasn't worth it. And I don't understand what was his mindset to prove a like to do this because and I, I'm happy that the NBA banned him because you got to keep the integrity of the league going. But uh true, what was your reaction of how stupid he's good guy keep up this was stupid Jonte Porter was for losing his NBA career over twenty thousand dollars when he got a million dollar yeah, contract. Uh, he, he, yeah he he an idiot. I mean it, it's simple mm-hmm. as that. Um mm-hmm. now did she he got banned or not well Maybe, maybe I don't think he should have, but guess what though? Who is John Tay Port? No disrespect, but you got they gonna you know when they see a situation like this, you're gonna be used as an example. Yeah. And listen, like it isn't at the end of the day, like you don't like mind you, the sports betting that has really been involved in the NBA for a little 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 while now, and mm-hmm. the fact that nobody else was doing it and you doing it, and it's like and mind you, you understand you maybe want to help your friends out, but you are you can help your friends in different many ways. You can give a job. Uh-huh. Have I mean there's different ways, like you got basketball players doing podcasts and, and things of that nature. You got Jeff T doing podcasts with his friends, and uh-huh. you know, I don't understand him the whole helping your friends thing, it doesn't even make any sense. It's just 
I mean, for twenty thousand dollars, and it's like you for twenty thousand dollars, you could have could have asked Michael, you could ask your brother, you could ask your brother for that for that whatever. <laughs> hey man, you get the game, like, whatever. Man. Like, like come on, like it's 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 definitely like it's yeah. stupid. Like you said, the rules is rules at the end of the day. Rules, there's contracts for a re- listen. NBA had contracts done for a reason. They this has been talked about. I guarantee you, this probably been talked about, and he didn't care. And guess mm-hmm. what? They banned him. So, I mean, yeah. it's it's really stupid. And he was definitely taking the under every time, but under under threes, he was out there breaking. It was what before you go, Sean. I see one video clip, right? And he shot the ball so bad, and it went in, and his face was like he was not happy in the three. I was like, "Yeah, man, get this man up out of here. He got to give up out of here." What about you, Sean? Though, yeah, well, the caveat I would add is that he's an idiot with a rich brother, so you tend to be well, you can be a little more stupid when you're an idiot with a rich brother. Yeah. Shout out to Jackson Mahomes. So the point is, is you know, there's a little more room for error there. Um, but you know, but again, I think what what Adam Silver and the NBA had to do was to set a precedent mm. to say this is what will likely happen if you get caught up in this behavior, Bang. um, because they want to protect the integrity of the league. Now, I am not the biggest fan of leagues being involved as involved mm-hmm. they are in sports gambling. Um, because again, we already question as fans the integrity of the game, particularly the officiating at times. Yep. Um, and I say at times, I mean all the time. Uh-huh. But the point, I think the bottom line is, is that you know, these leagues have decided to to do this. Um, I think they cannot be the moral majority as it relates to sports mm-hmm. gambling, um, particularly with their own employees i.e. their players, coaches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that said, these are this, these are the breaks. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, um, he was not a – the, the NBA is not going to lose viewership because Jonte Porter is oh, no, no longer in the league. Uh, so if it were going to happen, this is the best person, best type of player for it to happen to for the <laughs> league perspective because it's like, okay, you know, it just opens up a roster spot. For somebody else, you know, Pretty much, yeah. um, and uh, whether we like it or not, um, you know, the NBA had to send a message to the other 449 players on this one. And the the message is you do this and we're going to get you out of here. Um, yeah. So don't do it. And go, go, Jerry said the integrity of the NBA was tanning when they caught the refs cheating. Yeah, it took a minute. It took a while for them to get it back too. After that, too, it took it took it took some time. It did. It didn't happen overnight at all. It right. did not happen overnight. Yeah, did not happen. Now on to the WNBA because now WNBA is just the hottest thing in town. Obviously, this is probably one of the highest view draft draft uh, draft that the WNBA had in a long time. Yes. Caitlin Clark is obviously the talk of the talk of the draft, the main one. Obviously, you got Kimboza, you got Andrew Reese. Shout out to them. They have Chicago on fire right now. But with these new rookies coming in, and a lot of WNBA players, former WNBA greats, former players or players now had a lot to say. And it's starting to get to a point where it's like getting bad and things are getting out of hand. Things are coming left and right. Like, man, you. Caden Clark, it's, it, it, when Kayla Clark was at Iowa, Iowa fans did make it kind of hard to even show Caden Clark some love because, you know, the Iowa fans was wilding. We ain't got to go wild to the point. But now she's at a whole nother level. And the whole nother level was the WNBA. So she's going pro. Uh, we got Dana Taurasi, who's just not stopping. Like, oh, yeah, they got to get a reality check when the league, which it could be a, uh, could be true. But I'm like, aren't you the same guys who's complaining about wages? I'm like, this is the one who's going to get y'all to that next level because she's going to bring viewership in. I'm not saying say, hey, Kayla Clark, come bust, bust our behinds, but like, and push her, push her to her courage. Like, oh yeah, she's going to be great for the league, but hey, it's going to go down when she get here. Everything seems like, hey, then you got Lexi Brown on. I believe her name is Lexi Brown. If I said her name wrong, you know, correct, correct me. She's a former player or is a player on the team where she was on Gills Arena talking about, I don't know how her, pretty much going at her game, like how she plays, it won't necessarily transfer over. She's not going to be as good, things like that. Just just, just shit. Imme- imme- immediately. 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 
Yes. Immediately, which is which is like you don't expect nobody, uh, you don't expect no player to be good immediately. The only player in WNBA history who was just as good in college as they was coming coming to the NBA, the uh, WNBA, the first year was Candace Parker. She won Rookie of the Year MVP of her uh, a rookie season. So it's rare, but but I'm still saying like you know saying like hey, it ain't gonna be sweet, but short because it seemed like a little spike coming their voice. Then obviously the great Cheryl swoops. Which got into some other controversy because all she was kind of trying to say was like, "Yeah, the women are pros here. It's gonna be a hard transition for when she come into the league," which is understandable. You know how the internet takes everything, so the internet took it as, "Oh, Sarah Swoop is an old hater and she was being racist." You know what I'm saying? So then she doubled back and comment like, "I hate when people try to like say I was racist. I'm not racist. Black people can't be racist." Um, and then she was like, Oh, I got a friend that way. Now, me personally, that irritates me when you get to like the situation about discrimination, like any race, like, oh yeah, I, I'm not I'm not racist or I'm not this because I got a friend in this color. That don't mean that just because you got a friend of that color, don't mean you can't be a certain way to another race. That's the only part I really have the situation. I think the WNBA, this is the this is their moment to shine, and this is their moment to take this league to the next level. I think everybody need to come full circle and understand the goal. It's cool. It's cool as you could tell her that, hey, Kayla Clark, you're not going to come in this league dominating. But let's focus on, hey, look, we need to figure out how we can market this right so we can get this money. Y'all don't need to be putting no bad press because now it's coming off as not just Kayla Clark, too. All the rookies of this class. The it seemed like they just getting hate because they going to bring the, voice, the viewership in, which is I think the players who are playing the league now – and the only person that I heard say this was Cheryl Sloop, Cheryl Soups when she doubled back on her point and said, like, yeah, I think what she's going to bring to the league is great. The viewership and pack out stadiums, which you need if you want to get paid more. So I just say embrace the youth. Just just embrace. This, that's my long story short. Embrace the youth. You can have these stupid things going on. People calling each other racist or people are calling each other hater. Just embrace it and let them know it's going to be a tough time when you go. That's it for me. Yeah. What about you, True? And then I'm going to let Sean go. Um, yeah, there's a piggyback, and like you said, I mean, the sheriff shoots. I don't, I don't think, I don't think she should even address the race. I don't know why she she even addressed that. I mean, she just mm-hmm. had a comment. I don't know where race came into it. When just, I mean, yeah. I mean, it does come into it when you talk about Kevin Clark, unfortunately, like you said, when you talk about Hollywood and all that, whatever, and her fans, mm-hmm. whatever. But I mean, look, I mean, it's very interesting, man. I'm not gonna lie, it's getting very interesting. It's like the new the new school versus the old school. Mm. And it's like it I like it. This is could be a storyline. One thing about these leagues and things like that, what they what they like to do, they push storylines. Yeah. And this could be a storyline and, and it's like where you got all these upcoming female, they hung like you said, listen, they trying to and and all of them got one goal is to expand the game. Mm-hmm. To listen, this is what we are capable of doing. We this is we we Males ain't the only one that's playing basketball at a high level, yes. so that I I, I I I like it. So I mean, um, and going back to yeah, Lexi, yeah, Lexi Brown, yeah, yeah, she played for the Sparks. She's deep. She's Dee Brown's daughter. Dee Brown, yeah, Dee Brown's daughter. So, what I don't know why it, what, what, her comment I, now she not now at any ball who comments say like Tarot, she's the hater. Like I when I heard her, I was like, yeah, she's definitely hated. Yeah, like, yeah, Tarasi for sure. She's still. Cause she's still, cause Taraji, like she's about to be out. She's a, like she's about to, like I don't know how long Taraji's going to be. Oh, she needs to go ahead and hang it up. Yeah, I'm like, oh, but like Lexi Brown, she's still like she's not. She only like what maybe like twenty six. She ain't yeah, that. Like young. Lexi Brown, still yeah. like still in the lead. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like so, it's like her complaining about it's like first of all, like you you I understand like short troops and the Hall of Famers got the input, but like, you calm. You a role player. Shout out to you, you, you me. Hold up, calm down. Like you, this benefits like every like like I said. Regardless of if um, Kaylin Clark, if you like her or don't like her, even the other females you don't like it, the Angel Reese's, whatever, Cameron Brinks, whatever, they're gonna bring in the viewership. And I think, I think the WNBA need to capitalize on this the storyline right here because it's, it's getting real interesting. Yeah, they don't capitalize this. This this is sink the WNBA. They, they don't capitalize on this. But Sean, what about you? What you got? So let me let me um, if you permit me, uh, True and SB, give me a second here because I think two things I want people people to understand. 
the issue is not with Caitlin Clark personally. Mm. The issue is with the coverage that Caitlin Clark has received from a media that largely has historically had a white bias. Right? There have been great women's basketball players before Caitlin Clark. Agreed. But now because the coverage is greater, they talk about her like she's doing something no one else has ever done, which is not true. It's just the coverage is greater, mm -hmm. right? That's the difference. So when people talk about Caitlin Clark and it comes off as spite or bitterness, the bitterness comes from the coverage from a media that largely has a white bias. Mm -hmm. I want that to be for everybody to understand that. That's what it's always been. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another part of that that I'm not going to get into because that opens the, another can of worms. Mm -hmm. But that, but I will just say that America tends to have a love of love fest with white women, particularly white women who are doing it big. Check, check a couple players on the NFL roster too, but okay, okay. So mm. let's 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 get let's make sure we understand the historical context of that, right? And again, that's a much deeper conversation, but I want people to understand that's where it comes from, mm. right? Now, the other day, um, Caitlin Clark was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Um, and she gives homage to some former college and WNBA players, including Maya Moore, who was her idol, who she idolized, Dawn Staley, um, just to name a few, right? Um, I think she understands it. I think she understands it, but she herself, from what I have seen, has not spoken directly to it. Oh, no where Paige Beckers has spoken to it. Yes. But we also understand Paige Beckers upbringing is why she's spoken to it because her stepmama black. Mm -hmm. Her stepmother basically raised her. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to understand why it's coming off that way. I'm not saying it's 100% right, mm -hmm. but I want people to understand why it's coming off, why, why it's coming out that way. Right. When mm. and again, 40 years ago or 45 years ago, when Larry Bird came into the NBA, the media coverage wasn't as great. But mm. the media coverage that was there was the same thing. When there was a story written about Larry Bird, it was mm. like Larry Bird could do no wrong. He was the greatest thing. You watch a game and Larry Bird could be on the bench and a guy on the Celtics could make a pass. And he'd be like in the in the commentary, be like Larry Bird made that pass. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Larry Bird on the bench. He didn't make the like you know. It was Larry right. Bird who gave him the confidence that he could make that pass. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you another example. I heard a few years ago from a former NFL quarterback who was mm -hmm. on Colin Cowturd's show, <clears throat> basically say that the Tom Brady effect in Tampa was so great that the Rays were winning and the Lightning was winning. Tom that Brady ain't got work. ain't got nothing to do with that. Right. That was nasty. That was nothing nasty. to do with that. That was nasty work. I said that I said that's disgusting. That God, is absolutely that's disgusting. Yes. God, that's nasty work. That's nasty work. Yeah. They, gla they glaze the all time. That's all yeah, it's all time it's, glaze. It's, it's, it's all time disgusting glaze. That's what happens with the media, with who they often push up as the great white hope, or in some cases, the great white hype. So I want people to understand that's a very, very mm -hmm. real thing. That's a very real thing. Um, and again, at the end of the day, is Clayton Clark a talented player? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Has she helped raise the interest in women's college basketball absolutely will she do the same thing for the WNBA? that remains to be seen mm -hmm. right but it can't be her alone no no it can't be her alone she's got to be a part of it yeah she's got to be a part of it 
And again, I hope she plays well. I want to see her do well. But I also understand the women who came before her who were as great or if not better. And again, I'm not going to compare the two because we're talking two different eras. I can understand why they may feel some type of way about it and about Caitlin Clark. But again, I want people to understand it's not a personal attack on Caitlin Clark. It's the, the attack is on the white biasness that the media often likes to operate with. Mm. Mm. I respect, I respect it. And uh, speaking of this comment, Thunder said, uh, what are the comments at boom? He said, I don't want to be that guy, but we all know Carrie Irving was snubbed. It, is it Team USA sponsored by Nike? Um, There's other things too, but I ain't yeah, 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 but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not it's other not Nike too, athletes but... on the team. Like Steph is not a Nike athlete; yeah. he's on the no, team. No, no, I don't think it's he that. turned down Nike contracts. You talking about dude turned down Nike contracts on that team? Right? right? Yeah, yeah. He turned down Nike contract because they had his name wrong in the presentation. Yeah, that that'll make me turn it down too. Like you weren't even really rocking with me. But speaking of Nike, though, Caitlin Clark again is reportedly closing in on an eight-figure deal with Nike that includes a signature shoe. Would you guys be getting the Caitlin Clark ones? True. Um, I mean, they, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they, if it's a, because some, some shoes be ugly. I'll, we got to wait and see, but like, but it, it is kind of, like, I do, on the way, I do want, I do want to address this though, because the three current females, that has shoe deals are all a white woman. Uh, Two, um, so, so Stewart from in the Stewart. what's the, I've got the other three. I was beg my, I'm just from yeah, 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 yeah Brianna Stewart and uh Sabrina Sabrina Inescu. Yeah. From the um Liberty, yes. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying they can't have a shoe deal. Go get a. Hey, you can get a shoe deal. Yeah, hey, hey, you can negotiate. Good. That's that's great. But uh, going back to piggyback with Sean's point and why people be upset. Because not the fact it's not about it's not a Caitlin Clark or an individual thing. It's the, the 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 media and the coverage and the things is like that's why people are mad. And this is one of the reasons why. Like, listen, nobody's saying that she can't get. Nobody's mad about the success, but it's like, don't make it seem like she's carrying or she just oh she's just doing it all by herself. This is this is a movement. The Angel mm-hmm. Reese's and things of that nature and, and the Cameron Brinks. In the cardosis and all that, they, this is a movement. It ain't he, he yeah. muted too? Uh, SB, I'm muted. Can you hear me? Yeah, you good now? You good okay. now? No, no, no. The, the Sabrina's nice though, too. I, I remember I, I seen them shoes. They is nice. Yeah. And a lot it's of men crazy. It it, like they got three, and like I said, they, it's only three. I'm I, and I was like, hold up. I was like, that's 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 kind of it's kind of strange to me. I'm just saying, listen, hey. It's, it's a, a lot of Asia Wilson don't have a shoe though. Got Asia Wilson, Asia Wilson already be the best of the game. She's the and best she don't player. She got a shoe league. contract, and you that's leading right. the Las Vegas Aces. And I, I'm, I don't. Yeah, know. now that's that's that's, that's crazy. Why I'm going back to a strong point. Yeah, but again and that's again, crazy. nobody crazy. has come up with a legit reason why the best player in the game in the WNBA does not have a signature shoe. But someone who's never stepped foot on a WNBA court already has a signature shoe. And again, this is not an attack at Caitlin. This is a, an attack on the systems and the structures of why these things happen. Right. And the fact that nobody can come up with a real definitive answer as to why this continues to happen. That is the issue, y'all. And that is what, you know, again, why you will hear people say, the stuff they are saying now again they will not elocute it in that way mm-hmm. so i'm going to do it for them and this is why and again i speak about the united states this is why i always tell people the the, the united states is not post-racial it will never be post-racial there will always be some element of race involved with it it may be spoken it may be unspoken but mm-hmm. again when someone can give me a definitive re- rationale as to why Asia Wilson, who great player, the best player in the league, the best player in the league, the two-time MVP, the defending champ, right? Two-time. Really, two-time, really, two-time, champ. 
two time champ, but now currently the defending champ. Mm-hmm. Right, because I, mean, I think they lost the year before, if I remember correctly. No, I think but they won back to back. They back to back. They back to back. Oh, they back. back. Oh, they back. Oh, they back. They back to back. Oh, they Drake. Okay, they back to back. They been. They been the three P. They been the three P. Yeah, yeah. They made three P too. That's crazy. Yeah. So, so again, nobody has given a real logical answer as to why she does not have a signature shoe. And again, someone just walking in off the street. Who again is bringing a lot of fanfare? I'm not taking anything away from that. It already has a signature shoe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that so crazy. that's that's really the issue, y'all. And again, that's where. And again, the I don't, I'm not going to go there. I'll leave that alone. Mm-hmm. This is why people say the stuff they say. This is why it always comes to this. What is it? Uh... Do you believe it's a revenue issue or a white hope issue? I know people who never watch women basketball tune into the college tournament. No, it's not either one of those issues. It's a marketing issue because the problem is this, right, Thunder? The women's college basketball did a phenomenal job of marketing the teams. And then once the teams got a player that you could, they push the player. Because I guarantee you, Kayla Clark, Iowa was probably the only school where people was just a fan of Iowa because of Kayla Clark, unless you're from Iowa. But every other program, no, it's LA injuries. They they did a good job with LSU, but LSU already had a lot of fans of the school already. UConn already had a lot of fans of the school already. You know, USC already had a lot of fans of the school. But it helps when you got a superstar caliber player like an Angel Reese, a Juju Watkins, Paige But. You know what I'm saying? So it helps with that, but I think it's just a marketing thing. They have to do a better job in funding their money into marketing the league better. It's not hard. And make people be fans of the team more. You can't follow the standard of what the NBA doing. The NBA has got to a point where now is people are more fans of the players than the teams. And that's why part of the reason why the NFL is has always and will be more successful than the NBA because they make people fans of the team. They don't make you fans of the player. The only position that people really be fanned out for is the quarterback because they over push the quarterback. But besides the quarterback, really, you don't hear nobody. True ain't, true ain't a Patriots fan because Tom Brady played for the Patriots. He liked the Patriots. Sean liked the Saints for the Saints. I like the Chargers for the Chargers. LT might have brought me to them, but I like I'm a fan of the team. Like LT been retired. I did not stop liking the Chargers. I think the WNBA need to look at what the NFL has do and start pushing the teams more. You know what will help you? If you don't destroy one of your most historic teams, the Houston Comics, who was like the Boston Celtics of the WNBA, you don't get rid of your history. You got to get them something to learn from and like soak up like a sponge from that. You They have to do that. That's that's just me. That, that's what I yeah, think. Yeah, so to that point, SB, and I want to hear True's thoughts on this. Hmm. The, the WNBA is getting ready to expand, right? They have a goal. They want to expand to 16 teams. I believe by 2028 was the, the number that hmm. um, the commissioner put out. Hmm. I have no problem with them expanding. But make sure you expand to markets that not just can support a team, but that you can stay in long term, hmm. right? Because if you look at the original, the original eight teams that came in the WNBA, the Charlotte Sting no longer exists. No longer Cleveland, exists. Cleveland Rockers no longer exists. The Houston Comets no longer exists. The Sacramento Monarchs no longer exists. The Utah Stars no longer exists. Five of the original eight no longer exist. That's terrible. That's not good. So, it, and again. Your first dynasty, the Houston Comets, is no longer no longer exists. So I think it's great they want to expand. I think they understand that there are great women players coming from the college game that will they want to be a part of the league. They want to make sure they have enough jobs for them. Mm-hmm. But the other side of that is put them in markets where you know they will be supported. And also, if and again, I and and again, I'm a firm believer of put them in markets and match them with teams that have great NBA players. So you can do some marketing with that great NBA player and that great WNBA player together 
And again, mm-hmm. use the NBA to help that um, that piece of it as well, right? It, there's, you know, uh, I should use the example. But Kevin Durant and Brittany Griner play in the same city. Should they be marketed together? Yeah. Yeah. No, I can see that, yeah. I right. would. Right. You know, um, yeah. So I think that makes sense. I just I, I think that's you know, that's part of what they, they have to do. And again, you got a lot of NBA players who, who rock with the W, who are behind the W, but take it mm-hmm. to the next level, right? You got to use more marketing between the two to try yeah. to help the, the W more. Agreed. What about you, Trey? Yeah, like, absolutely. Like they got, they definitely got to start marketing the the, the dumb NBA. Like they got, like you said before, they got to capitalize on these females' talents and these potential storylines or whatever, and enhance the viewership because mm-hmm. it's that is women, female, women basketball is viewable. It's been proven. Like this, the like, look at this past year, college female college basketball. The numbers they was doing, the WBA draft, like the viewership, it's, it's there. It's not it's like it, it doesn't exist or you can't do it. It's there, but you have to garner garnish that. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's like these teams, like I said, Houston, like I said, the comments not even here no more. So, and then it's like I see that some of the teams they talk about, they list, they talk about Portland and and Tor- I mean Toronto. I'm like, bro, I mean, like what? Like, uh-huh. please, please bring bring back the comments back. Bring back. I mean, it, it, first and foremost, like I mean, Na- I'm not. I'm Nashville. I understand, like the, you know, location. Cause like, so you got the LSU's and South Carolinas. I guess I understand that in that it, you know a team in that area. But like, I don't know. It's like it's like Philly. I seen Philly. Yeah, I think Philadelphia mm-hmm. was one of the teams. I mean, which is I ain't, I ain't mad at. It, but it's like Portland. I, it's like come yeah. on, y'all just putting teams anywhere, man. It's like y'all, you got it. Got to make sense. It does. I think the God Warriors finna get one though. The Lady Warriors. I think the Lady Warriors yeah. gonna be yeah, one. Yeah, the Warriors think. next season. Next season they kick off next season. That's that's, that's, that's fired. So imagine, like, imagine yeah. you had a league, bro. True, you probably be sick. The NBA right now had no no Celtics and no Lakers. Well, that'd be terrible. That'd be that'd be terrible. disturbing. No Bears, yeah. no Packers in the NFL. That's, ter- that's yeah. terrible, man. And yeah. again, you know, and and again, as a reminder, the Lakers didn't start in LA. We know this, right? Mm-hmm. They moved to LA, but they had to build to have a certain level of success there, mm-hmm. right? It took them like twenty years after moving there to finally find some sustained success. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the W again, it's a shorter season. Um, but what markets are you in? Are you in a market that is going to support a WNBA franchise, mm-hmm. right? Um, I remember they had it was uh, the Tulsa Shock. Um, mm-hmm. In Oklahoma City, uh, those games, if I recall, used to be pretty packed. They weren't there long. Mm-hmm. They weren't there long. They were literally gone just like that. Yep. So, you know, um, so, yeah, so I just think it's, that's the key is get in the markets where you know they're going to support it. Mm-hmm. If you can tie it with an NBA team, great, but get okay. where they're going to support it. Okay. I'm with that. Uh, let, me, let me know what you guys think about that in the chat and all other chats. But we got to switch to the gridiron real quick because we got true here. So we got to talk about his Patriots. The draft is coming up. Also, tune in. We will do a live draft stream. Uh, we'll be we debating on we might. If any, if you guys are watching in the chat and your team pick, we might have bring you up on stream to get a live reaction and get you how you feel about the picks. But um, true, your New England Patriots are open into trading a number three pick, but they like the QBs that are available. If you are the Patriots, I mean, if you're a fan of the Patriots and you see you traded a number three pick, would you be happy, sad, or what? What? You, what you, how you feel? It depends what they. It depends what they get out of it. Be honest with you, I mean, I mean, listen, I mean, they say like they they like the quarterbacks. I think they're gonna take a quarterback, but I mean, they still. Hey, listen, if y'all got a, a great enough offer, uh, future first rounds and or maybe a player, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, a wide receiver per se, whatever. To we can give you the third pick. Hey, mate, hey, but it's, it's going to take a lot, per se. I mean, but I don't see them doing it. it I mean, because, mm-hmm. like I said, you got – for the third pick, you got to give up a lot. Or team got to give up a lot for that third pick. So, you bet you do. I don't see them doing it. Shout but what I do, I mean, 
I'm not going to. I'm not trading it. But I'm not trading it. What, what, what the Patriots should do, man? I, I'm going to tell you, I, I already know who y'all quarterback is. I'm gonna, I got a whole theory. True. I know I'm going to tell you who your quarterback is going to be. So let me, let me let me throw out some of the truth since we do have True the King, True true mm-hmm. Patriots and Celtics fan. The True, true Patriot TV. True Patriot TV. Yeah, it sounds like a Donald Trump channel. All right, True. Would you rather the Celtics go 16-0 and 0 in the playoffs or – would you rather the Patriots draft Marvin Harrison at three and bring back Tom Brady to be the quarterback? Oh man, that's that's crazy. That's a crazy question because <laughs> bring back Tom Brady is insane. Hmm. What you doing, Trip? You know. Come on, man. Study long, study wrong. You know what? You know what? You know what? I rather I rather draft Marvin Harrison get Tom Brady because yeah. listen, thing is so today my team you don't got to win sixteen zero win a championship <laughs> in the playoffs yeah, man that's true. you don't got to do that so you can still they still go with but hey I made listen because like I said before I mean I'll do that Marvin Harrison Jr. bring back Tom Brady um the one thing is though we have still got to bring in a, I would still like to bring in a young quarterback. Maybe in that draft we can somehow do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm so it's rare. I'll maybe give. I will try if if that's the case. Give give a shot with um Michael uh, Phoenix. Um maybe in that later in a later in the draft maybe mm-hmm. you can if you somehow you can do that or Jay I don't know well Jason Clark may go high I don't they be talking about him may he may go like mm-hmm. top ten I don't know yeah. but Michael I think he so I'll do I may do that. Bring, but you had to bring in a young quarterback, so Tom Brady can teach. You know what I mean? Hey, I think he may have been joking, talking about he come back. But hey, if he did want, hey, listen, no respect. Come back, Joe it's, Kobe it's, the, it's the goat. It's, it's the goat. He can do anything. No respect to Joe. No respect to Jacoby Brissett. But I think, I mean, Tom. I mean, I don't know. Tom Brady keeps up in good shape. I mean, I ain't expecting him to be a, a top ten or anything. But he, hey, so why not, man? Marvin okay. Harrison Jr. Hey, why not? First of all, I'll, first of all, you 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 had true going crazy. True was like, man, like he you know he do. But know. first of all, Sean, we not finna ruin Marvin Harrison's career by sending him to the Patriots because Tom Brady not coming back. We Tom Brady be joking because Tom Brady can throw the ball, but he can't take a hit. If it was flag football, which is almost getting to that point, but it ain't there yet. Um, uh, Tom Brady ain't coming back. But also speaking of Tom Brady, what what school did Tom Brady uh, go to again? That's Michigan. Michigan. Oh, okay. Michigan. It's this guy who won a championship with this championship caliber pedigree quarterback from Michigan. Just won a national championship. Game kind of fits similar to Tom Brady's style. I'm 100% guaranteeing that the, the Patriots are going to trade down. They're taking JJ. JJ McCarthy will be a Patriot. Gu- guaranteed. Because everybody too high on Drake May. Daniel's going to go. So you got. Williams, May, Daniels off the board. And then the um who was Penix. Then Penix gonna be next. Unless unless y'all got five quarterbacks going within like the first eight picks, which is a high it's a possibility. The Patriots gonna trade down, add some more pieces, draft JJ. JJ McCarthy will be a Patriots shoot. And I'm saying it here and I'm telling you this. He's gonna be there. He fit. Fit the description, man. He, the, the, you know the Patriots been looking for their next Tom Brady since Tom Brady been gone. Don't be hold up. This is a different. This is a, this is a different regime. It's, no, it's, it ain't. Hold up. This, Belichick Jr. running the team. His son. His a, hold on. He's no. Hold it's, a, it's similarities though, but it's a new culture. They taking signs down and everything. The next man up signs. They took him down. This is a whole new regime and whole different culture. I mean, it's just, it's builds off of what Bill Belichick, the the core per se, right? But it's built off of two more of a, a like I said, Jeremiah, um, like a P, more players coach, so he's mm-hmm. more relatable to the players. Say, so it's it's it's, it's different. It's a remix. It's the remix per se. If you want to, it's a remix. This is the remix. <laughs> but I don't know, man. What you, Sean, what you, you, don't, you don't trust my theory? I think I think it's right on. It's NFL like storylines. The storyline, I feel like it fits in the story, man. Well, so I think two things. One, 
Um, I think the Patriots only trade back if they can still get the guy, one or two or three of the guys at the top of their draft board. Um, how high they have J.J. McCarthy on the draft board, I, I don't know. Obviously, teams are very protective of their draft board. Mm-hmm. I think the Patriots will not trade out of three until they see what Washington does at two. Because mm-hmm. I don't think it's a guarantee. I don't think it's a hundred slam dunk that Washington is taking Jaden Daniels at two. No. I think he's high, but I don't think it's a guarantee. I think they could mess up the draft and take Drake, Drake May, May. Mm-hmm. which would be the Washington thing to do. Is Drake um, May a bus ready to happen? I'm I'm calling it. Yeah. So and again, if Jaden Daniels there at three, the Jaden Daniels is the pick. Like let's mm-hmm. you know let's get that out of the way right now for the Patriots. Yeah. Um, but also, let's say a team like Minnesota, who has the 11 pick and they have the 23rd pick, comes calling at three because they want to jump up if, say, Jaden Daniels drops. Mm-hmm. I think, again, it's going to take more than that just because of the draft chart. But I think the Patriots are – Patriots, their big thing is stack talent, right? Mm-hmm. You may not get the quarterback this year. It may not be this year. You may It may be next year. You may be in the same position that, say, Chicago was in this yeah. year where you traded out of that pick. You got additional picks, and now you're able to take another quarterback, even though you had one. Um, you know, So I think the Patriots are in a very enviable position, but I don't think they're going to do anything until we see what Washington does it to. Washington is going to use the pick. It's just a matter of who they decide to use the pick on. Yeah. This is this is this gonna be crazy. This this draft gonna be this this gonna be crazy. This this draft gonna be crazy. Um, so I had a different intro for this one, but now after I talk pre-show, Sean, I got I gotta switch it up a little bit. Let we have to have truth with this topic to it always. Sometimes when we put the references down or we put stuff on our resume, we don't realize that some jobs might actually take that call that you put on that reference list. And they might leave a bad review. Um, so to my line, so and I'm gonna be honest, before show I had a whole Robert Kraft, you bogus your back door to because I thought Robert Kraft was out here making calls and letting people know, hey, don't trust Belichick. I thought he was stopping him from getting a job. But shout out to Sean as we do real takes on fake race, do our research. Sean gave me the 411 on that. No, Robert Kraft didn't call teams, teams called him, and he laid them, he gave them an honest review. Robert Kraft warned the Falcons owner, Arthur Blank, not to trust Bill Belichick during his head coaching interview. So true. Looking at the spectrum of that, because I had to tell you the whole thing, true. I can't just say, hey, he just said that. So technically somebody called to ask him, was Robert Kraft in the room for blocking Bill Belichick, saying not to trust Bill Belichick for him getting that Atlanta job? Yeah, I, I saw a report and, like, I mean, it's all, it's a report, I mean, it, it, it's it's unfortunate if that is the case. Like, I mean, yeah, he didn't – Robert didn't call them. But even if they called him, per se, that is – I mean – Dirty. Yeah, I'm, I hate the I'm, re- I'm very <laughs> – it, 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 like I said, it's bogus. I mean, like I said before, I seen – like I said, I ain't finished watching the the, the, the Dynasty uh, documentary. But it's like they definitely try to paint Bill a certain way. The crash, it does – it's not they do own that they control that documentary, not the NFL per se. They control mm-hmm. that. So I don't know what last conversation with Bill Robert Kraft had. It must have not been as pleasant because mm-hmm. now I mean it. I don't know. It's, but like I said, listen. Even if you have disagreements, man. Like Bill, listen. And, and Robert Kraft, you would do do own the team. But let's let's we have to be honest. This is the respect thing. Without Bill Belichick, it wouldn't be the Patriots we see today. You hired right. this man to do a job, and he did it. He did a above and beyond. He did a. So, yes, everything wasn't pieces of cream. Everything wasn't perfect, especially in the end. Every, hey, listen, it happens mm-hmm. to, the, to the best of them. So, to sit up here and give this man a bad review, alleged, uh, report, reportedly, hopefully it's, hopefully it's not true. I hope it's not true, but it was reported, and – what it's like it's not especially the things that happened of recently it's, it's not it's it's not a good look it's only thing that confused look. me true hold on well, let me ask, Sean, i'm just going to ask true this question because you the inside on the patriots you just you you patriots through and through but to say not to trust bill belichick what about bill che- Bel- belichick that you don't want to trust like 
what is it? Because that's something crazy. Say not don't trust Bill. Like yeah, what that's, is, that is yeah, that's what it's, it's bogus to say that when you how you say you don't trust him when you had this this man within your your head coach and your de facto GM for twenty four years. That's a lot of responsibility when it comes to trust, and you're saying that's that that's 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 that's, that's kind of wild. So I, I so I think it's two things, y'all. One, I think the reason why Arthur Blank makes that call is if he's seriously considering hiring Bill Belichick, it's like you know, listen, this is a you, you know, this is a big decision. Um, you want to check your references, check the references, mm-hmm. and you want to check with the person who Bill Belichick worked for for the last twenty four years, mm-hmm. obviously Robert Kraft. And while everybody's going to say, oh, six Super Bowls and blah, 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 you shouldn't have to check anything, I think there are serious questions about what happened the last four years under Belichick. Because, again, the documentary I don't think helps because the documentary paints Bill, particularly with the whole Tom Brady thing, as he did, he never treated Tom Brady the way people thought Tom Brady should have been treated for all he did you mm. know, for all the years he was there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the first thing. I think the second thing is, is, um, and Bill says, Hey, listen, you know, I'm going to come in, I'm just gonna be the coach. Well, anybody can say that uh-huh. to get the job. Like, you know, so they ask you, Hey, will you work overtime? Yeah, I work overtime. I ain't got no problem working overtime. You know, mm-hmm. you work weekends, yeah. Any weekend you need me to work, I work. As soon as you get the job, man, I ain't working no weekends, man. I need my weekends to hell with y'all. That's how that's how people act. No different with these with someone like Bill Belichick. When Bill mm-hmm. gets in the building and Bill says, hey, I don't like the structure of this. For us to be mm-hmm. successful, we need to change it to A, B, and C. I think teams were very wary of doing that for Bill, not knowing how long he was going to coach. Because, again, I think at this point, Bill would be coaching for two reasons. One, to prove he can win the Super Bowl without Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And two, to set the all-time coaching record, to break Don Shula's record. Right? Mm-hmm. So, because um, like he is – Right, because he is 72. He's not a forever you know, answer at head coach. But if you're trying mm-hmm. to get something in the next two or three years, like the Dallas Cowboys will be next season because Mike mm-hmm. McCarthy's done. Um, I'm, I'm predicting. I'm not saying he is. I'm predicting he'll be he's, done. He, he's be done. He's cooked. Yeah. So, you know, so I think that's the other side of it, right, is that everybody was so shocked that Bill Belichick didn't get a job. But Bill is not – necessarily the easiest person to deal with he, he uh-huh. it's you know bill's bill's person who says I, you know i did what was best for the team i do what uh-huh. i think is best for the team i still ain't got a real explanation about why michael butler didn't play the super bowl still is crazy still it's still we still don't even him don't uh-huh. really it and he yeah, won't talk it about is, it. It, but that's the thing. It's the, like that. That's the outside in, right? And that's if you yeah. don't, you don't really know if you're not around Bill. That's the kind of the thing with Bill Belichick. Because, like, mind you, all these things about Bill not be trusted or this or that. If you look at the players that talk about him, they 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 defend him, they fight for him, mm-hmm. and they say he's the bet. Like, so it's that's the thing. You have to be if you're not in Bill Belichick presence per se. You're not around him. You don't know him per se. A lot mm-hmm. of me is. He gonna be like that, like I said, the Tom Brady thing. I mean, I mean, listen, Tom. I, I, it was a video. Tom he had an interview. He was crying in tears about him getting picked, and that mm-hmm. that Bill because Bill believed in him and things, things of that nature. So mm-hmm. yeah, he was tough on him, but that him being tough on him made him who he was. Yeah, it made him that you know what I mean. So it's like that's the thing too. I mean, Bill to the Ravens is crazy. Calm down, uh, Tiffany. Uh, but listen, I mean, you it's gonna be the Ravens. He was already with Bill, the Ravens. It, he was he was Cleveland coach before they moved to Baltimore. Right. He was already with the Ravens. So it's so it, it's it's definitely interesting. I mean, it's definitely interesting on these. I mean, we'll see. We I don't know if we go. I mean, and it, I mean, maybe he needs a break anyway. Coaching. I mean, like he's been. I mean, at the time that's a lot of time too. Mm-hmm. Twenty four years coaching and being a GM. So hey, mm-hmm. it, maybe it's just a blessing in disguise too. Hey, maybe hey, take a maybe. break. To relax, he's doing. Matter of fact, he's doing. He's doing cover. He's doing stuff with Pat McAfee. Him and Nick Saban going to do some type of draft. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I want to hear. I'm definitely interested in that. So, you, you know what's interesting? If y'all watch the NFL Top 100, 
um, mm-hmm. when they did the uh, the top 100 all time, not the the one they do every season. But mm-hmm. they did a couple years ago. It was Bill. It was Rich Eisen. It was uh, Chris mm-hmm. Collins, worthless, and you know some other <laughs> players. Um, but yeah, uh, but Bill was great on there. Like he his his knowledge, his history, under, understanding the game. He was actually very engaging. Yes. And they brought different guys on there, Joe Green and Ray Lewis. And mm-hmm. obviously, we know his affinity for Ed Reed. And they had Moss on there. They had Dion on there, among others. Um, but, yeah, so I think he's actually going to be really great mm-hmm. on television with McAfee. You're going to get to see a little more of his personality, a little more of his sense of humor, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. But can he – because when he wants to be that way, he can be that way. But mm-hmm. we know – Bill don't always want to be that way. Bill, Bill don't want to be that way. Bill is, and when it's a time of business, it's time for business. But time of yeah. business, it's time for business. Like he yeah, like, you know, <laughs> that, what that lady? Yeah, yeah, you know. So, and, and and me personally, my belief is that Bill Belichick will not be a head coach in the NFL next season, unless it's for the Dallas Cowboys. That these, if you just work for mm. the second most powerful owner. In the NFL for 24 years, you're not coming back unless you're working for the most powerful owner in the NFL, which we all who we all know is Jerry yeah. Jones. So, yeah. yeah, I don't believe he's coming back next year unless it's the coach and the Dallas Cowboys and work for Jerry Jones. We can see that happen. On the true, how would you feel to see Belichick with Cowboys gear on? I mean, hey, that'd be heartbroken. I, I mean. I wouldn't be surprised it is what it is. Like, I mean, like you said, hey. It's a one-up spin. Hey, Robert, okay, you going this? Are you going to do this? All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to want to, hey, I'm going to, you know, Jerry Jones going to be actual. He's going to throw the red, he going to throw the red carpet. He going to, Jerry Jones going to be nasty. He going to be like, this. Is, hey, I'll, listen, the fact that, that he ain't been coaching for a whole season is, is you know, I'm very going to do it. It's gonna oh, no. They go, this is going to be red carpet to after that first week of training camp, and they're going to be in tour from every day since then at that point. But on oh, to the next one, too. Um, so 1.5. I'm going to say 1.5. Uh, this fight has been a lot more shenanigans than things have really paid attention to the fight of. I can definitely say that with these two guys. So uh, Ryan Garcia missed weight by three pounds. And with the shenanigans came a bet that David Haney bet him every pound that he's overweight, he give him 500000 And he honored his bet uh, via David, uh, David Haney from uh, Twitter, I believe, X. Um so he paid him at 1.5. 1.5 million is crazy over three pounds. Ryan Garcia, which I'm kind of concerned a little bit because Ryan Garcia usually is on point when it comes to his weight. So for him to be three pounds over, which they still going to do the fight. Um, what do you guys see for this fight? And besides, you know, what y'all think about shenanigans? And also, is Ryan Garcia being overweight? Is that going to be a problem? True. And who you got winning? Um, yeah, the shenanigans is crazy, especially on Ryan Garcia's end is – for sure. I don't know. He, I think he's playing mind games. He's trying to do is 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 this? Because this, this is it. Like I think it's like because I mean it's a big fight. This is the biggest fight in his career. I mean yeah. you got Tank, but like I think Devin Haney is. I mean if he can, I think he's gonna lay it all on the line. Mm-hmm. Even though I think yes, he did miss weight, but like I think it's it, it it may be a mind game thing. He probably like listen, hey, I may not get his opportunity like this ever again. Hey, I'm a. Hey, I'm gonna just go all out because Snaggins is crazy. Yeah. But with all that being said, Devin Haney gonna stop him like under five rounds, in my opinion. Mm, under five, Devin Haney. Okay, said. okay. About you, Sean. What's your What's your think about Ryan Garcia missing weight and who you got winning the fight? I mean, I think Ryan Garcia is so overhyped. I'm, I'm so sick of Ryan Garcia. He fought a bunch of tomato cans. And basically got into uh, the tank fight. And, you know, we see he got that work in the tank fight. Um, the Haney fight is going to be very much the same to me. I'd be surprised if the fight goes more than six rounds. Because mm-hmm. uh, I expect Haney to come in and prove a point. Um, but, you know, the biggest fight of your career and you miss weight. Come on, man. Yeah, and, like and, and, and according to reports, he wasn't trying to do anything to cut. The, the three pounds or three 
0.4 pounds, I think it was, or whatever he's over. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's like you you weren't you you're not serious. Like, come on, man. So yeah. first, I, I hope Haney works him um, and be and just be done with it quick. I am, I, I got Haney winning. I think like Haney experience, and then I think he's just gonna outbox him. But I feel like Haney also, if we just seen with like the Lomachenko fight, where you can't take the chance because like Brad Garcia, yes, he be like tomato can, but he do got a little power with him too, and he could catch you. So. Yeah. And I don't want Haney to get away. Anyway, we just seen Haney get caught a couple times before. So we ain't going to deny the fact that, that Ryan Garcia could catch him. Um, one, two reasons. One personal reason why I don't want Haney to lose, because I need that Haney versus Tank. Because if he, if Ryan Garcia finds a way to beat him, Tank versus Haney ain't going to happen. Because he washed Garcia. Then to lose to Garcia would be crazy. But two, I, like I said, I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, Haney experience with the fight. And I think he kind of petty. He didn't give Lomachenko his uh, rematch, too. Because... That I hey, I don't know. I think I think Haiti lost that last fight, but we we could we, we could debate that another day. But I, I wish I would have wanted to see that. I want I would want to see that fight back again, but maybe Haiti didn't want that smoke again. So we got Haney. Lomachenko don't give out rematches either. Lomachenko don't give out rematches either, though. I mean, that, it's calling for you, man. Yeah, yeah that's, true, that's, true, no, that's true. That's true. That's true. No, that's true. And then and then and then Devin, listen, Devin couldn't make that weight no more. Like he he was like, yeah. was like 135. He had. He fine at one for it now. I mean, and I think he so wanted like, to go up too small too. Cut. I think Haney probably go going. I mean, too. eventually he, he's young. Like I said, he like he like he's only like what twenty five. Yeah, twenty six. Like he's young, dude. So you know he generally like gonna keep on still growing. So it's yeah. like, I mean, yeah, he probably gonna eventually fight at one forty seven, one fifty four. Eventually, like like so. Imagine keeping your body weight at 140 is crazy, bro. That's 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 some hard work. In that they a cut, they, a cut, a cut well, I mean, they, re- you know, they, re- they rarely walk around at their fight weight. I mean, right, like, yeah, yeah. So you know, normally a lot of times they they do have to cut. I mean, it's just kind of yeah, kind of what it is. And also, I think if I think the stipulation is if by some magical mystical, you know, Doctor Strange. Uh, Dr. Fate, <laughs> the way Garcia wins the fight, I think it, the it'll just vacate the title, and so it still we still could see Haney and and Tank uh, fight, you know, for a vacant belt. So I don't think it's yeah. off the table that if well, Garcia right wins, that um um that that fight is off the table. I just think it again and make it a little more uh, yes. complicated, but yeah, I still think it could happen. So uh, true, you are gonna be. Our mediator for what we did, and you gonna tell us what how good or bad of picks that we made. So obviously during the preseason, me and Sean made picks on these awards. Uh, we kind of got an idea of what we was at going with it. So I want your reaction to our picks. Tell us was we right, wrong? Was we on the right track? Was it bad picks or not? So let's let's see. Let's do Sean picks first. Sean had his MVP was Luca, Rookie of the Year, Wimby. Defensive player Bam, six man of the year Cam Thompson, uh, coach of the year Joe Mozzarella Sticks, and Keegan Murray. Let's get a good look at Sean picks and saves. What do you think? What do you What do you think Sean hit or miss at? What, what was Sean on point at? Um, the Keegan Murray was a miss. I think Keegan Murray was a miss. The um, the Bam. I mean, all the. I don't think. I mean, Bam. Bam, I think the Bam was a miss because Bam, they be doing Bam dirty. And I was like, a history has shown that Bam don't even be – I don't think he ever finished top three defensive player of the year. Which is I crazy. Not, not one time so is I crazy. Think, not, not saying he don't deserve defensive player of the year, but, like, the fact that history has shown that, like, they do him dirty. And it's mm-hmm. like other guys, like, even, and they do another dude dirty, like, every David. So, it's like they get battling. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. So, somebody like that. Luca, that's not a bad. That wasn't a bad pick. Luca, shoot, he's gonna finish top three MVP voting, so that's not bad. I mean, shoot, mm-hmm. he, he, he getting votes for people. Some people is voting for him. Some of the um uh, voters, um, the rookie of the year on the nail. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Victor and Biama. um, the six, the sixth man of the year with Cam Thomas. He started off hot though, because I was I thought Sean was on he point. Started off he hot. Was, he started he started off hot. He started off hot, but then, but then, like he. 
they need a starter. <laughs> they need, he was so good. He was so, that's <laughs> he not me. bad. It wasn't bad because, true, he – I mean, hey, he probably would have won six million a year if he would have kept on the bench. So, that's not bad at all. I was, it wasn't bad picks at all. What about uh, your, your coach, Mozzarella Sticks, for coach of the year? Oh, yeah. That, it wasn't a listen. That was, was a good. Hey, so yes. no more record. No more. That's a that was a great. Yeah, that's a great pick. So we know the, the OKC coach is gonna get it though because they're the number one seed. Yeah, but it wasn't a bad. Yeah, he gonna get it. He's gonna get it. Yeah. All right. Here's math. So man, I had Jason Tatum for MVP, Victor Wembanyama for Rookie of the Year, Evan Mobley for DPOY, Malik Monk for Six Man of the Year, Mike Malone for Coach of the Year, and MIP Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, that MVP, MVP Jason Tatum, he's tough. Luca yeah. higher. Low yeah. Sean got you beat there. The rookie year, yeah. that mean, Victor, that's that's that was the easy one. Um, the most improved Tyrese Halliburton. That, that was, was uh, that, yeah, you could have got it, but he got Kobe White and Tyrese Maxey. So I was, like, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to judge Keegan Murray or Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, that's a tough one because they both did get better to their yeah. teams and what they. That is a tough one. That's a tough mm-hmm. one. It, I'm, uh, what a six man here, Malik. You got on the nail on that. That's not mad. That it's gonna be mm-hmm. Malik Moke or Nas Reed winning six man of the year. Yeah. Coach Mike Malone, you got that wrong. That Mike Malone coach of the year was wrong. He ain't gonna finish. I, I thought. Yeah. I thought they was gonna glaze. I thought they was gonna glaze about the championship run. No cap. I he's a great coach. Let me make. He's a great coach. He's a great coach. Um, I'm mean, a defensive player of the year. Evan Moke. He Mobley. missed too many games off with it. He was over there. He missed too many games, so that's ridiculous. Sean, like, Sean got it. I think, yeah, Sean, yeah. I think hey, I get the Sean edge that out. Shout Sean edge that out. If you, Sean, if you looking back at your picks, yeah. you made, which one you think you was like ah, you maybe shoot too far for it. Which one you was like ah, I was on the money with. Um, oh, well, Keegan Murray. I thought Keegan was gonna take the lead. He did take the lead. Mm-hmm. Just again with sick with with most improved. It seems like again the last few years has gone to somebody who was like borderline all star, became an all star, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you know when John won, you know Victor mm-hmm. Oladipo won. Like you know so um, mm-hmm. the Keegan Murray one was just kind of like I don't let me just take a shot here. Um, yeah, but um, but obviously you know um, I feel pretty good about all the rest of the picks. Uh, Cam Thomas, I thought Cam was I knew Cam was gonna ball. Didn't know they was gonna start him so many games, which took yeah. him out of the running. So, um, but yeah, those, those are the only two. Uh, for me, I, I'm I'm looking back at the uh, obviously the MVP one. I think I shot too. I've been trying to get my I was trying to get my boy Tatum Tatum the benefit of the doubt. That's like two three years in a row. Trip. I've been trying to get my boy Tatum to get that MVP. Man, I, I'm I'm done. I did I did three years in a row. I can't, he ain't getting it, man. He ain't, he ain't getting it, man. I, I shot for the stars on that one for sure. Um, one of them that I'm like happy for, I feel like I, I was the Malik Monk, I was definitely on point with that. I, I knew he wasn't gonna like, I, I thought the Kings, I thought the Kings was gonna have a better year. I thought he was gonna come back and do better. I thought he was gonna make a trade during the season and have Malik Monk, he's gonna play good off the bench. Um, the Tyrese Halliburton, like you said, I was iffy. I didn't expect Kobe White or Tyrese Maxey to ball out the way they did. But the Tyrese Halliburton, which he could possibly get it still, because I thought of that same asset of what they've been doing in the world. Like you give a Jody Award, you knowing John already a star caliber player. So I thought Tyrese Halliburton would have been better. Okay. Um, last story of the day. We got to talk about these playoff times. This playoff time. So obviously, if you notice during the show, I was looking, 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 and now you know my laptop is closed because we are trash. Um, so the playoff series is set. Um, in so in, in the east. east, in the east. So we let's let's just do the east today. We can just do the east. First matchup, we can, we got, we can do we can do the west. We can do, we'll west. do the west. We can do the west. We can do the west. Yeah. Um, so we got uh, Miami versus Boston. How do you guys got that series going? No Jimmy Butler. Uh, I believe everybody on the Celtics is healthy. I don't believe nobody's really injured out. So a fully healthy Celtics team, a non Jimmy Butler Heat. True. What what you got for the series and how many games you got either team running? Um, I got Celtics like four or five games. Hmm. I mean, like I said, no Jimmy Butler. I don't know when Terry Rozier coming. He got neck spasm. That's that's a that's the neck spasm. That's that's painful injury. That's crazy. I mean, that's tough. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna be. T- 
it's gonna be tough, man. I mean, mm -hmm. it's gonna be tough. I mean, can Tyler Hero? Cause that's the thing. I know Sean talks about is can Tyler, Tyler Hero is a, hey, because when during this time normally, Tyler Hero will be Hero will be out, and everybody else got you know what I mean got to pick up a little step up. Can Tyler Hero? You know what I mean? Can yeah, he show some type of fight? Whatever you know what I mean? Show his show why uh, Sean is wrong that he maybe John get traded. Hey, hey, Sean, I, I, meant to, I meant to put that story in here. Jimmy Butler, the, the cursed up out and made him play good today because I heard this story on the, uh, the bus saying he was like 9 for 27, yelling 9 for 27, then he swung on Jimmy and Missy. He said, oh, now, now you're 9 for 28. And he came <laughs> out of ball. He bro. came out of ball now. So everybody, hey, look, it's sometimes it might be a method to the madness what Jimmy Butler does, and it does work. So do that method of madness, will it actually help? Your Miami Heat beat the Boston Celtics. Uh, I mean, I think again at the end of the day, you know, to have a chance against the Celtics, you got to be fully healthy or mostly healthy. Obviously, mm -hmm. the Heat are not. Um, you know, without Jimmy, um, I think the series goes six games just on the strength of you know Miami will play tough. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the key in the series when you're you know obviously the the lower seed is can you steal one of the first two games on the road? Mm. Um, if you can do that, then you can make the series interesting. But if Boston goes up 2-0, um, I just don't see the Heat having a chance mm. without Jimmy, who's, who was out for several weeks, um, and obviously not knowing Rozier's status. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say Celtics in six for that one. I, I think, like, first of all, I think coaching, sorry, True. Eric's supposed to go cut circles around mozzarella sticks like he always usually do. I think we definitely going to see that zone run, you know, because the Heat always give y'all as much problem. So I want to see if mozzarella stick can actually use Przingis in the post and dominate on the inside and use him to get more open shots from the other guys on the outside instead of they just forcing and jacking up threes. Um, I think the problem was going to come down to this series. There is no Jimmy Butler. I think the Heat will compete first second third quarters but when it gets to the point of the times where they need timely buckets what jimmy butler was very good at for them in the playoff i think that's that's gonna be missed a lot so i got the celtics in five i think the heat might get one at home or they might sneak off late one i think just one at home i think boston gonna go up 2-0 set the pressure maybe game three the heat sneak off then boston got i got boston running back to back um on to the next one, the number two one. This is very interesting for me because if Joel Embiid is healthy, we we, we this series could go either way because no Julius Randle, even though I know he don't show up in the playoffs, but Julius Randle is still a threat. The number two seed New York Knickerbockers versus the seven seed 76 True. Who you got and why? Yes. And I got to make, uh, make a pick because I've been contemplating on if I had to pick. Mm. I'm gonna go Nixon. I'm gonna go Nixon seven. Mm. I'm gonna go Nixon seven. I think people are, you know, the same when it comes to football helmet scouting. I think people are, are jersey scouting when it comes to the New York Knicks because of their history of, of recently mm. or twenty um in recent years memories, whatever. Right, the Knicks don't they always fold in whatever case may be. But I ain't saying this Knicks can't win a championship per se, but. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are underestimating this team, how good it'd be. I mean, plus, Joel B is hurt. I don't know how healthy he can be, especially mm -hmm. in, in a series. I mean, yeah, yeah, in a playing situation, you can afford that in a one game situation. But in a series, in a game series where his game plan is different game by game. And mm -hmm. like you said, the Knicks has the depth, even with the um, injuries without. Without Julius Randle, they have mm -hmm. Mitch Robson come off the bench. Harstein is an underrated big. Jalen mm -hmm. Brunson has been – listen, he's been balling. And mm -hmm. Tom Thibodeau, listen, Tom Thibodeau is coaching his behind all. He is – listen, he's, 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 he's this is one of his best coaching probably in his career right now. How uh, So yeah. Nick Nurse can coach too in the Sixers, but the, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is, though, Time and time again, it's just not even this is a drill and B problem. It's been players on that team that's with drill and B in the playoffs in the past can't that don't hit the timely shots or don't make the certain plays. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm gonna go Nixon seven. Nixon seven. All right, I like it. Sure. Go, you ahead your, go ahead and make your prediction, SB. I'll come in after you. Okay. Um, 
This is tough because the only thing that is weary of me is a Joel and B Hill. I think like Jalen Brunson is going to ball out 100 percent But I think they got a guy on the other side with Tyrese Maxey who can match that a little bit offensively. He might because Jalen Brunson is without Randall gonna have to put up like 30 this series to win. And is it possible to him to do that? Yes. I'm not saying Tyrese Max is gonna give you 30, but he's gonna definitely give you 25 and he's a young boy who's gonna make you work. And I think they will be attacking Jalen Brunson more on the offensive side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball when the Knicks are on defense. Uh, when I look at these teams also, this, I think the Selly Sixers got bigger bodies that they can put on Jalen Brunson, like the Kelly Oubregs. And also, you can say the same thing for the Knicks, but with uh, Tyrese Maxey. But Tyrese Maxey is not the biggest threat for them. Who does the Knicks got? And I know Tibbs is great defensively. A healthy MB who can stop Embiid healthy consistently. I think this was a bad situation for the Knicks, especially with no Julius Randle. Because like I like the, even though everybody liked the crap on Julius Randle, his presence is there being alone and also be able to work on the inside to make Joel Embiid work. I don't think they got nobody on the inside that can make Joel Embiid work. So with him even being injured, he's really gonna be resting. On 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 the defensive side, what what Mitchell Robinson? You know what I'm saying? What he what is he gonna do? What is he gonna add? What else is gonna bring to the table? So barring injury from Joel Embiid, and obviously I believe he's playing, and I haven't seen nothing say he's not gonna play. I got the 76ers upset in the number two seed Knicks in six games. Six six. I'm gonna go six games. Six Philly in six. I think Philly gonna come game one and probably win in the Garden. I got Philly in six. Yeah, I mean, y'all brought up some great points. Obviously, you know, with a health, how healthy is Embiid? Um, clearly, he's not a hundred percent. But if 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 Embiid is eighty percent, and he can be just good enough in the moments they need him to be, mm. Joel Embiid, um, the Sixers have a real shot in this series. I, mm. I am not counting them out. Mm. I'm also kind of one of their unsung heroes. I know he's out for Game One, DeAnthony Melton. If yep, they yep. can get him back, that's another you know body defensively they can throw on Brunson uh, to kind of keep Maxi you know basically you know uh, fresh. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this series to me is going to come down to coaching matchups. Um, obviously, I'd be interested to see in the playing game against the Heat. The Sixers really struggled against that zone. Mm -hmm. um, they they really struggled against it. You know, will New York play any zone or at least give them some zone looks to see if they can, you know, replicate some of those same struggles? Because as we know, it's a copycat league. Yes. Be very, very interesting. Um, and also, you know, this series comes down to me, which team clears the boards? Um, because mm -hmm. what you don't want to do is give the Josh Hart's and the DiVincenzo's and the Kelly Oubre's and the Tobias Harris's and the Buddy Hill's the extra mm. looks off of, you know, Boards. offensive rebounds or tip outs. Yep. Um, so who clears the boards better? Um, I'm, I'm actually with USB. I, I got the Sixers in an upset in this series, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to take seven games. Um, okay. I think it's going to take seven games. So I'm taking the Sixers in seven. Okay. I want to save this one because I think this is, I want to say this because it's another controversial series. So let's go, let's skip to the, Four or five matchup before we go to the three six. Cleveland versus the Orlando Magics. Yes. I think this series is is, is a true four or five C, and I think it's a lot closer than what people think it's gonna be. True, who you got? Orlando and Southern. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Um, I like that. I like I've that. been listening. I'm liking this Orlando team. And yeah, I understand they're young, they're inexperienced. That's gonna be hey, we could do hey to get out of here. That hey, that's mm -hmm. they gonna be their flaw. But this team is hungry, they're gonna compete. Mm -hmm. Um and 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 when they got the bodies to match up against the uh, um the office of Cleveland with Donovan Mitchell and, and mm -hmm. um, Garland. I don't think I think like I mean my opinion, I think Lando has been probably the most disrespected team when it comes to like just being talked about or in the league, in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. when people don't understand, like Paulo's a young star too in this league. He yeah. did, I mean, if Franz Wagner, you got Cole Anthony, he should need being the six-man conversation. Like mm -hmm. I mean, he's one of the, he's a 
Um, Jalen Suggs, one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wendell Carter and um, Jamal Mosley, he's one of the best coaches in the league, in my opinion. What he's been doing, mm-hmm. um, is I think in, in the Cleveland is going to be about the, I think chemistry, chemistry is going to be an issue with Cleveland because of the injuries, right? They've been banged up all year for their team, mm-hmm. and them gelling, them gelling and getting the consistency per se has been a problem. Yep, and I think the Lando's chemistry, them being, uh, of course, the bigger team. Mm-hmm. I got I got Lando with the upset, man. Well, that one seven. I like seven it. games. Sean, who you got? Uh, there is no excuse for the Cleveland Cavaliers to lose this series. That's true. No excuse. Um, their big issue last year in the playoffs, y'all remember, was you know New York. The Knicks were able kind of to to, to stack up on their guards, and obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, protect the paint well enough, you know, so um, J- Jared Allen was basically a non-factor, and Evan Mobley had flashes, but it wasn't mm-hmm. consistent. Um, that experience should have made this Cleveland team better, coupled with the fact that you also added some veteran guys, um, mm-hmm. you know, the Max Truces of the world, the Niangs, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so this Cleveland team has no excuses. If they lose this series – Jimmy Bickerstaff, pack your stuff. Because uh-huh. um, you have no excuse to lose the series. No. Everybody's uh, – and True is right. No, people haven't talked enough about this Orlando team. Orlando I think it's mostly Orlando. because th- this is their first time doing something in years. That's um, true. As an organization. That's true. So, um, you know, they're up and coming. They got, you know, some young talent. Obviously, we, we start with Paolo and, you know, Franz Wagner. Um, mm-hmm. you know, certainly Jalen Suggs is gonna be an all defensive candidate as well, mm-hmm. as we know. Um, but that said, the Cleveland Cavaliers should win this series. Um, yeah, you go out there playing with your food if you want to, Cleveland. Um, but you will lose. Y'all they, they should win this series. And Sean, I'm I have, to, I have to agree with you on one thing. Cleveland should win this series. But I have to decide with true. I got the Orlando Magic with the upset. I do not trust this team because chemistry issues. And also, even with the chemistry issues being gone, I haven't seen them improve from what they did last year. Now, the Orlando Magic got to pull a good Tom Thibodeau scheme because also with them stacking their guards, Donovan Mitchell don't pass the ball. He don't. He he tried to play too much hero ball. Him and Garland seem like they fight in the, the to, to outshoot each other, which they pose to play off each other better. And I like – the Orlando Magic's I like the Orlando Magic's team. I like this young team. They got the, they got the good defensive guards who gonna attack uh Donovan and um um Garland, gonna blitz them defensively, gonna attack them on the other end of the floor. Paulo Bencaro and Franz Wagner is like a their dynamic duo. Now we can argue that Donovan Mitchell today is a better player than Paulo, but we talking about as a duo. I think Franz Wagner and ba- uh, Paolo is the better duo than any other duo that you could put together. You could say Mitchell and Mobley, Mitchell and Allen, Mitchell and Garland. I'm taking Paolo and Franz Wagner. Yes, the experience could hit them now. I just want to see can this young team fight back because they can beat this team. Can they fight back from the point of seeing the guy go off like Donovan Mitchell goes off and don't let one dude kill you because I know what Cleveland's going to do. And after that happened, Yes, I agree. Dude should lose his job because they. There's no way you coaching this team with all this talent. And you're not using, and you're not using them to the right plan. But I got Orlando in seven, winning the series. I got the Orlando in seven. Okay, next one in the East. Come on, we got to go ahead. This is gonna be crazy because they've been beefing all this year. You got they've been beefing all this year. The Milwaukee Bucks versus the Indiana Pacers. This is a besides honestly. The first series because of Jimmy Butler being out. Every series in the East is 50 50, and it could go either way, honestly. In the East, it go either way. But Bucks versus the Pacers, true. Who you got? Your, your favorite coach of them all, Doc Rivers, is coaching this Bucks team. Oh, who you got? Man. Who you got, true? I got, I got, I got Pacers in six. Ooh, in six. Okay. Giannis is not healthy. Giannis is not the main the main reason why Giannis ain't healthy. It's as simple as that. Giannis is not healthy, and you don't you don't play around with calf calf strains. You do not that's an injury you have to take very 
He's serious he's because man. he's the franchise. He's the guy. If you listen, mm. this series, listen, this is listen, this is always next year. And years become listen. Mm. And Giannis, he, he had that calf strain on his jumping leg, too. So I mean, and plus, I mean, you don't you don't want to risk that like you know, rushing him. He probably no. back probably like three or four game three or four. But in, but that being said, it may be too late then because if mm. it, 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 it cause listen, the Pacers, listen, they Giannis they best defender. Giannis is the only reason why listen, they like middle pack defensively. Let's be honest. If you take Giannis off this team defensively, they're probably last in the league. Giannis they they're only not. defender. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, well, Giannis they only defender. You got yeah. bro, you got bro, you got bro, you got pat. I mean, I get what you're saying, SB, but I'm saying like the the, the impact defensively Giannis brings is the mm -hmm. reason why they're even decent defensively in the first place. And been going back to defense, they've been inconsistent yeah. defensively and offensively. In especially in the playoffs where it slows down, it, it yeah. been they were struggling in the playoffs, and especially when it slows down, it's gonna make it be worse. Especially no, with true. Giannis not on the court, and it was like the Pacers. We all know the Pacers; they're going. And it, granted, mm -hmm. they they don't have um Ben Mac Benedict Matherin; mm -hmm. he's out. That but was tough. I mean, I just I think the, the Pacers match up with. I mean, I think I got Pacers mm -hmm. in six. Man, it's just they a healthier, they a healthier team. Um, and Jesus Dame, listen, and also too, Dame, Dame, and Dame has to listen. Dame has to show me something because every time where he has to go through adversity, it seems like he struggles. Fold it's like been a launcher. It's been a pattern. It's been a pattern for a while since it's in some some type of advert. When he's an underdog, it's Dame time. It's all this. It's Dame. Mm -hmm. when he, it's, it, he's he's a he's a he's a killer. But mm -hmm. when is he has to go through some type of adversity? He struggles, and that's going. And, and, and the question is, Dame can Dame can perform and show up? And, and this year, be let's be honest with you, Dame has been underperforming. So, yes, I don't trust the Bucks. And when, especially without if Giannis was healthy, it'd be a different conversation, different story. I got Bucks mm -hmm. with, but that being said, I got Pacers in six. In six, okay. Sure, who you got? I also had a Pacers in six yeah. as well, um, part because of Giannis's injury. Um, but part this is a series for me where you're going to see the value of Pascal Siakam, mm -hmm. all the playoff experience. Um, mm -hmm. again, you know, who on Milwaukee can guard him. Um, mm -hmm. this this series, he should he should light it up, mm -hmm. um, offensive, offensively, especially. Um, and and also, again, you know, it, you know, this is the series where the two coaches have been riding off of one ring. Their whole their the last 15, 10, 15 years, you know. So you know, I believe you know firmly in in uh, Rick Carlisle a little bit more, and I mean just a little bit more over the certified nursing assistant. Yep, Rivers. <laughs> um, but yeah, but no, I think no. This series to me is is the Pascal Siakam series with mm. with without Giannis definitely. Um, he he should absolutely um, go off, but I think the underrated matchup is going to be Brooke Lopez and Miles Turner. Yes, which one of those guys um, give their team the most? Um, not just and not just offensively, but also we know both of them are very very good rim protectors and and help defenders uh, traditionally. Um, so th this series to me. Um, should be the Pascal Siakam series, so I'm taking the Pacers in six. Um, I'm gonna have to agree with you guys. I'm taking the Pacers in six, also. The Pacers have already been giving this team tough trouble. First thing first, like you said, true, you, you address the one elephant in the room that that's the obvious thing. No, Giannis, you're in trouble. I know I, the reason why I said if you on Brooklyn Lopez being a defender, it's always, it's always easy to look good. And when you only got to do half the job, when you got that Greek freak on the court with you on that side yeah. of the defensive field, he's gonna make everybody look good. But um, now I'm looking at this situation as like the team already gave them troubles. They guard play, they get cooked. So Tyrese Halliburton finna put up crazy numbers this series. Run the floor, the offense great. One of the best passing guards in the league. Um, then Giannis got hurt by walking. It wasn't like somebody bumped him or something like Jimmy. So those are the most scary injuries when you just That's walk in and something just pop. So it's not as I don't believe Giannis is coming back, and I don't think he should come back. 
And then also you can't change your coach midseason and expect everything to run like a well oil machine. This team has been on diabolical timing. There's been a, 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 a plane ready to crash. Fire has been going everywhere. So I expect I – don't, I don't expect too much for this Milwaukee Bucks team. I think they should – this should be a wake-up for them, and I think it will help them to actually go out and search for a, a proper coach for this team. Sorry, Doc Rivers, you have to be the, uh, the scapegoat of the situation. I think the pace is going to be better offensively uh, for sure defensively for sure and i think they go close up the door and only way they can probably make it a, a, a good game is Giannis come back and i think that'll be bad for Giannis. i think they should just call it a year let Giannis sit out for the rest of this year and then take it to the next take it take it how it is just take it on chin take it no diddy um all right now this one obviously the number one seed the game the warriors of the kings game is on now what's the score to the game anybody got it what's I watch uh, it. Pel Pel Pelicans, Pelicans, Kings. Pelican, 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 Pelican. Yeah. Pelicans, Kings. I'm sorry. Yes. You know, you're fine. No, the Kings are uh, it's tied up right now. Um, okay. Yeah. With so. no Zion, the Kings should get the job done. But we'll yeah, talk about the should. one seat last. Yeah. Right. Kings should get the job done. Yes. I, I feel like this would obviously, this one team is very popular, but we can keep it a buck. And I'll go first on this one. I didn't got to do much to explain it on it. Nuggets versus Lakers. The Lakers getting swept. 100% guaranteed. The Lakers, the, the Lakers getting swept. We ain't even finna play no game. Mike Malone don't even like him, so he gonna be fully locked in with culture. That's why I said the Lakers should have ducked this smoke, and they didn't. So they finna get swept. I, I mean, I ain't going into no crazy details about the situation. They can't beat this team. They lost every game this year to this team. Even moments where they posed a one for LeBron, 40,000 points. Crashed out. Oh, they celebrated real. Let's ruin the celebration. They crashed out. So I, I don't the, the like it's just sometimes when you open your phone and you see a contact in it, that means you got the number. The Nuggets has got the Lakers number. There's nothing they can do. Uh, I ain't going no crazy analytical details, no reason. They're getting swept. That's me. Nuggets in four. Jeez, man. True. I I I hate to say this, man. I hate to say this, man. I got I got nuggets in seven. In seven, wow! I think it's going to be more of a competitive series than what people think. Mm. I think. I guarantee. Listen, I think in low in low key, I think the Lakers this year is better than it was last year. Low key, um, when it comes to the additions of, of, of course, Gabe Vincent, um, mm. Dalvin Ham, another year under his belt, even though he is suspect at times. But listen, I, he barely was. I mean, if I had to say, I think still more experience. Per se in the playoff, um, mm. I th it I don't th I mean like I said before it's hard to sweep I mean like I said they swept them last year per se I understand they swept them last year but that was still I don't it's gonna be hard for them to do that again for against the mm. Lakers yeah um it all depends on D'Lo I think D'Lo is he's playing the best ball in his career I think that's gonna be the X factor in this series mm. um. Last year, Bruce Brown was litting them up, and he's not there no more. So, I mean, Jamal Murray's lit. I got, him up too. I, I was got, like thirty on D'Lo. You know, he was cooking D'Lo. I mean, look, but here's the thing. But the problem was though, D'Lo didn't do anything. So when D'Lo didn't true. do anything, it makes it even worse. So I think yeah. when D'Lo steps up and performs how he's been performing, he has done all season. I think they can make it a close series. Yeah. Well, I got, I got Nuggets and seven. Nuggets and seven. Okay, Sean. Um. So I I actually have Nuggets in five, okay. Um, and I think that's me being nice. Um, to be honest with you, um, I think there there are two things that the Lakers have to do in this series. Um, and I said it on your channel last night, true. I'm gonna repeat it. Number one, they have to cross match defensively. Um, and what I mean by that is with Rui in the starting five, Rui has to guard Joker. Because I need Anthony Davis free to sag off of Aaron Gordon defensively to rim protect and obviously to be a help defender. Mm -hmm. Not over help, because if you over help, obviously we know Aaron Gordon can flash to the dunker spot. And and obviously if he's hitting that mid-range, he's you know certainly you know dangerous. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um that's the first thing. I think the second thing is find a way to get Gabe men get Gabe Vincent some quality minutes in this series. Um uh -huh. and again, do you play and I'm just throwing out 
hypothetically, do you play Gabe? What do you go to a three guard lineup with Gabe, Austin River, Austin Rivers, Austin Reeves, and um, and D'Lo? Um, you know, it makes you a little smaller, but certainly makes you a little more dynamic. And again, um, defensively, you know, you you Gabe does a de- decent did a decent job on Murray in the finals last year. Um, so I think you got to figure out a way to kind of deploy him some this year. This series, though, for me, comes down to the only way the Lakers have a chance in this series is if their bench completely outplays the Nuggets bench. Um, obviously, the, the weak link of the Nuggets is their bench, but we've seen enough from you know Christian Brown and, and obviously Reggie Jackson, who's a starter in this league, whether people will agree or not. He's a starting point guard in this league, um, you know, Peyton Watson, what did they get from him? You know, um, you know, things like that. So, um, but that said, when it comes down to if the games are close late, I trust Denver way more. And the reason why I think the Lakers fear, and I don't say they fear Denver, they but do. the reason why they Denver, they know they really can't do anything with Denver is they know on the other side of the floor, they have a guy who thinks the game the same way LeBron does. Mm. He's always he's always looking for, you know, those different cross matches, and he's looking for those different things in the, the same way LeBron does. Mm. And in LeBron's career, when he's played against guys like that in the playoffs, like the Rondos of the world, mm-hmm. um, you know, and obviously now Joker, it's always an interesting matchup when you got two IQs on the floor like that yep. on both sides. Um, but Denver just executes. Their, their execution is just it, – it, they just tough to beat when they're executing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's, uh, I'm taking Denver in five, but it wouldn't shock me if the series is over in four, but I'm taking Denver in five. Denver five. Okay. We're going to wait on the Thunder one because I, we don't know who the matchup is, so there's no point in talking about that. We only got two more. I know – Appreciate everybody watching. So I know we're going over a little bit over the time that we is, but it's playoff time. We had to go. So we got two more for y'all. Stick with us. Two more. Uh, let's do. I want to say the Luca and one because this like it's starting to get the point that it's a rivalry at this point. It's, it's it's there. It's there. Timberwolves versus the Phoenix Suns. This is I think this is the most interesting series in the West. True, who you got and why? Man, it's a, a toss up series right here, man. Like this is a, it's going. Jeez. I, I got Suns in seven. Okay. I just I don't trust Chris Finch as a coach in the play. I I just don't. I'm sorry. Frank Vogel is a chick. Hey, I know people criticize Frank Vogel, but Frank Vogel is, a, is not a bad coach, mm-hmm. and he has a lot of experience. And it's just certain things that the um the Wolves have mm-hmm. done this year. And they've been pretty good this year. They third seed um. Um, no, they third seed for a reason. So mm-hmm. I'm not taking anything away from. Them, but there's certain things they have that that can that that can cause them when it comes to the turnovers, um, half court offense, and if you if you're not efficient with that against a team like the Suns or take advantage on a mm-hmm. like, they, like they play like to play small ball, yeah, it, it can it can, it can bite you. So I'm just gonna go and listen. They they got K. Listen, K. The, the question is also too, they gotta match KD. Can they match KD? Do they have any we know Ant Man is is he's always he's a rising star? McDaniels. Can they do they have any bot does can Ant match with KD or it can Devil Book can do in the playoffs? Because listen, regardless of hey, Suns are six seed and they was had all this expectation and we saw the season and they ain't who we thought they was or whatever, but this I mean I'm I'm gonna go with the Suns, man. I trust them more. They better coach, and they more experienced. And I, I mean, I, I got the Suns edging it out. Well, okay, Sean. What about you? Who you got? This is a very very difficult series to pick because, to True's point, I I have no idea what Chris Finch is gonna do in this mm-hmm. series. And truth be told, I don't think even Chris Finch knows what he's gonna do in this series. Um. You know, the two things for the Suns for me that bother me about them in this series, can they exploit Gobert enough to make Gobert non-playable? Mm-hmm. That's a big question for me. I'm going to be watching that in this series. And then the second thing is, 
Um, if I think for the Suns to really like truly win the series, they got to blow these t- this team out. They cannot play close games with this team because mm-hmm. we know Minnesota can get stops when they want to uh, defensively. And also they have the one thing the Suns don't have, which is an actual point guard. Who will help them execute late? So I think the Suns have to blow them out in these games, put them away, get them out of here. Mm-hmm. But if the games are close, I actually favor Minnesota, in spite of the fact that Chris Finch is their head coach. Yep. Um, yeah. So this is a series very difficult for me to pick, but I'm a, I'm going to take T Wolves in seven. Um, I, I'll just take T Wolves in seven, but. This, this is the of all the picks that we're making. This is the one I am the least confident in, yes, um, to be honest. Because again, I, yeah. Chris Finch, Chris, Chris, yeah. And I have to agree with you that I'm very nervous uh, and I'm not 100 percent sure on this pick because also I'm picking the Timberwolves, but I also have to acknowledge the fact that the Timberwolves are 0 and 3 against the Phoenix Suns this year with all the problems that they had. Um, because you do got to uh, you could question their point guard play. You question their defense, but you still got Booker and KD on that other side of the court. And we've seen them put up crazy numbers because uh, even against, even in, in the Nuggets series, and the Nuggets was just so poised, and they still ran their sets and everything that they did, and they stuck to what the game plan was, and that's how they got the job done because can Minnesota handle seeing KD or Booker go off for 30 40 together and what would you do for that and also i am concerned about the rudy gobert situation where because obviously if you if you anybody we got to get him off the we gotta get him off the court because he he is a great rim protector we get rudy gobert off the court is do you trust cat to the, defend the ram for a majority of the game i don't know i don't know if he's 100 trusted but i'm a, i'm gonna go i'm gonna go i'm gonna I'm I'm try to trust the coach I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Timberwolves. I got the Timberwolves in seven. Really should be six. I think they go seven. Then it's just you giving Katie and them the gate. Um, I think Ant Man is gonna take on the challenge of Booker. Obviously, he's gonna make Booker work on the other end. I feel like Katie is gonna do what Katie is gonna do. But I think their big man is gonna be the difference in the series. I, I got the Timberwolves winning the rebound battle. I got them winning protecting the paint better. I expect them to play a better defensive game overall. And and, I, and I, I'm expecting a big series from Car Anthony Towns for them to win this series. Cat has to, Cat has to give them 24 and 12, 24 and 12 and five. We need, we need the boys. We need the points. Cat has to be a big factor, and I got Cat being the X factor with his versatility and skill scoring. And I feel like he's going to dominate on the boards. So I'm gonna go Tim Wolves in seven. I'm not 100 percent confident in that pick, but I'm gonna I'm stick with my T Wolves pick and T Wolves in seven. All right, last one, y'all. We're going to get up out of here. Um, Clippers versus Mavericks. It seems like every playoff, they just cannot avoid each other. It's always going to happen. The Clippers versus the Mavericks are always going to happen. We don't know if Kawhi is going to be 100% healthy this series. Um, but if I had to pick me, just real quick, I got the Mavericks in six, only because I'm questioning, like, Kawhi's health. I don't know what what's what's going on with Kawhi. So testing Kawhi is going to be empty. I think the Mavericks have been playing better as a unit. Um, does does the Clippers got bodies to throw at Luca and Kyrie Irving? Yeah, but is they really gonna stop them? Possibly not. So I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a trust in Luca and the Ma- uh, Luca and the Mavs to get the Clippers up out of there. True. Um, I even before the, the injuries, I had Matt like how before that we heard that Kawhi would have an injection in his knee. I had Mavs in seven. Mm. I got Mavs in six. I'm more. I mean. More confident to pick now because, like, shoot, they need they need Kawhi Leonard to be Kawhi Leonard to, mm-hmm. to beat the Mavericks. It is what it is. Like, no disrespect to Paul George, James Harden, Westbrook, and them. But listen, I mean, I mean, they yeah. it, it, the Mavericks. They've been balling. They've been yeah, balling ball. second half of the year. I mean, listen, they only lost like four games, like eighteen and four, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Derek Lively, Derek Lively, Gafford. Um, that was a big PJ Washington against size in that front court. Um, mm-hmm. Luca, Luca playing like an MVP level. I mean, he may not win it, but he playing like one. And mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving. I mean, that's a. It's yeah, it's gonna be like I said. Kawhi Leonard is is like they need to match 
Kawhi, they don't have no. If Kawhi can't be hundred percent, the Clippers don't have nobody on that team mm-hmm. that can match the what Ky- Kyrie and Luka can do. Or even yeah, so, that's true. And and like I said, the Clippers had these same flaw. They, like they really, yes, have the Clippers gotten better, but their team defense is still suspect. Mm. I mean, rim protection is inconsistent. Mm. It's like I'm going with the Mavericks. This I think it's Mavericks time. Hey, look, it's the Mavericks time. To, hey, it's, it's zero two. It's gonna be one two after this. Mavericks, Sean, who you got? Mavs and six. We can move on. Mavs and six. We can move on. Appreciate it, True for taking down his time for coming to do the show. True, appreciate hey, no you, problem, man. We got that Patreon. No problem, no problem. So uh, obviously, Sean, this is the funny episode. So we go episode sixty now. So true, we do. You got to pick a play with the jersey number, or since we in the high number, we in the lineman numbers. So you got to pick either play with something to do with the number nine or number six or something like that, and you got to pick a player or performance what that player did. For me, jersey number sixty then I told Sean I was gonna do this. I'm picking Dennis Rodman, man. You know, back in the day, he wanted to get that number. Uh, David Stern said H to the now. So, Dennis Robin, today you get your number 69, man. So, I'm picking Dennis Robin, the word. Who, who you got? If you can funny, pick- I was thinking about it. <laughs> I don't think about Dennis Robin too when you said that. That's crazy. But, yeah. Uh, any six any six or nine? Any six yeah, or nine? Play it with a number, but you got to yeah, give me like a performance. I mean, oh, yeah, Ray John Rondo, man, in um, playoffs in the, in the uh, 2012. I'll be what game? Oh, not, even at that, it's um oh nine oh nine. I like this against the Chicago Bulls. Oh, you uh, average you was a triple double. I, you start, you hey me in man, just saying. You said you said give me you said give me a performance, man. Uh, <laughs> Rondo, I mean, just, hey man. Great series, but, by the way. One of my favorite series. Great series, a classic series. One of the best the first round matches of all. Best time. first round, yeah, for sure. Um, average goes for all right, buddy. All right, Sean. Yeah, Sean, what you got, man? You got somebody um uh number 69, or do you got a player with the performance with the number six or nine? Or do it? I do got a player with number 69, Hall of Famer, or 69 with both um the Chiefs and the Vikings, Jared Allen, defensive Jared end. Allen. So okay. yeah, uh, I'm going with Jared Allen as uh I like it. Jared number Allen. 69. Number I, like I thought they banned that number. I th- I don't know why I thought they could have did as uh, the NBA did. did that the NBA that did. did. Yeah, the yeah. NBA did. Yeah. yeah. The NBA did for sure, man. Yeah. yeah. But appreciate everybody watching on all apps, IG, TikTok, Kick, Instagram. Appreciate you guys all watching the live. See you guys on Monday. This has been Real Takes Over Fake Debates. With SB and Sean, shout out Trudy King TV. Go subscribe to his channel. He got great content over there. Also, and shout, shout out to the crossover, crossover. Too. all that. Shout crossover. out to the crossover. FY Sports Ace tomorrow, five fifteen. Mm-hmm. Hey, we we going we going to talk about everything. The sport, hey, mm-hmm. WNBA draft, the fights coming up. Hey, so stay and tuned when, for that. And when, and and when is crossover. if just to get the people today, like where where can they find a crossover and what day and time do y'all usually do the episodes of the crossover? Well, yeah, shout out to Lamont FF Sports Debate. Go subscribe if you ain't already. Um, yeah, the crossover every Saturday. Um, basically, I'm like, every 5 p.m. Eastern time or 6 p.m. It all depends, mm-hmm. but right during those times, so catch us every Saturday, 5, 5, 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, they got a good. They got a good team over there on the crossover. I got to catch an episode one of my Saturdays. I ain't, I ain't working, bro. I got to. Hey, listen, we bring, hey, listen, we gonna and hopefully we can bring y'all as guests up too. So hopefully we can yeah. do that. We you know that's going to happen. So yeah, yeah we, we gonna cross, make it happen. Hey, that's a double a ton, the crossover. Yeah, crossover so take the crossover. Some, hey, <laughs> man, we gotta make the crossover happen, man. Shout out to hey, come through, man. Hey, man. Oh, Bad man, the super bad coming through there, man. But appreciate you guys for watching. This has been another great episode of Real Takes Over Fake Debates. SB Shine Web. See you guys on Monday. Ooh.